Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. We're following two developing stories tonight. First, problems plaguing the Wayne County Juvenile Jail for months. Have the county executive making a big decision during tonight's State of the County Address. But first, the battle continuing over a cell tower on an elementary school in Wyandotte. Tonight, parents packing a meeting, this time demanding answers from the cell phone provider. A busy night in the local four newsroom. Thanks for being with us. I'm Kimberly Gill. I'm Karen Drew in for Devin Skillion tonight. Our Victor Williams was at tonight's meeting, joins us live with the latest. And Victor, representatives from T-Mobile were there, but they didn't answer any questions. Yeah, Karen and Kimberly, not like these parents were expecting. They were hoping to talk directly to T-Mobile, but after a presentation was made to the board, reps from the company left the building. Dr. Koss, you need to resign this evening. Yeah. <laughs> Frustration and agitation in Wyandotte as a result of parents not getting the answers they want about safety concerns regarding the controversial location of 5G cell antennas. This is absurd. Theoretical. He didn't know left from right, and she gave nasty looks the whole time. Reps from T-Mobile were in the building making the case for why their technology is ideal for Washington Elementary with theoretical stats, but no concrete data. We have literally hundreds of cell sites in the, cells in the central region that are on schools from nursery school through college. Board trustee Frank Tarnowski tried pleading with officials to have a change of heart. Has T-Mobile ever took in consideration that basically the whole city of Wyandotte is against you guys. <laughs> <laughs> However, director of lease and site optimization for T-Mobile, Michelle Sanders, made it clear that was unlikely to happen. We have all of our federal permits, all of our state permits, all of our local permits, and a valid contract. Parents already irritated at being crammed in a hot stuffy room got especially mad when the reps from the company didn't directly answer any questions and left through the back door. You should want to stay. Towards the end, a former board member present when the deal was made in 2018 tried unsuccessfully dousing the flames, bringing up how no one cared when the agreement was made, causing a negative reaction from the crowd. Nobody brought it to light. That's because you didn't let it come up. It didn't come up. We held two meetings and talked about it. Nobody attended the meetings. I'm... Now, over the span of 30 years, T-Mobile has agreed to pay the district about $360,000. But if this contract is indeed breached, then that number could be up in about, I guess, uh, excuse me, that number could be about $5 million. But they are waiting for a concrete number they should have in about a week or so. In Wyandotte, Victor Williams, Local 4. So many upset families tonight, that's for sure. All right, thank you, Victor. Our other developing story, Wayne County Executive Warren Evans is declaring a public health state of emergency at the county's juvenile detention facility. Months of overcrowding and now a criminal investigation into an alleged rape of a 12 year old boy has Evans making that decision tonight at his state of the county address. Mara McDonald is live in Dearborn. Mara Evans didn't shy away from the problem. No, Kimberly, he didn't. And he held his annual state of the county address here in Dearborn. And yes, there was a lot devoted to good things that have happened in the county over the last year. But he spent a substantial amount of time on the issues plaguing the JDF and made the announcement tonight. It's time to call this a public health state of emergency. Let me show you. Extraordinary action has become necessary, which is why today I'm calling for a public health state emergency. Evans detailing how the situation at the JDF has spiraled. This facility once had a history of being the gold standard. However, we continue to experience overcrowding issues for reasons beyond our control. The county places the blame on a lack of residential treatment beds statewide. You've got kids languishing inside. Many of those kids who have been adjudicated have spent more than 100 additional days in detention instead of the treatment facilities that they deserve. The JDF is set up as a detention facility, not a treatment facility. Juvenile offenders, when they're adjudicated, are supposed to receive not just detention, but treatment at residential facilities. And while the county certainly is responsible for youngsters in their care, they aren't responsible for treatment. It has now reached critical mass. 
Tomorrow, the problem will feature prominently in Lansing. It's scheduled for a hearing in front of Senate appropriations. Back here live. So at the end of the day, what exactly does creating this public health state of emergency do? What well, sort of changes up the structure at the county, giving it sort of a incident command emergency type of structure with Evans being the direct report, you know, everybody that is dealing with is going to have to go directly to him. And it's also supposed to give the county a little more leeway to move resources around and hopefully at least maybe alleviate the staffing issues. We're live in Dearborn tonight. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. We'll stay on it. Mara, thank you. The Warren Police Department is defending its protocols after the death of a four-month-old baby over the weekend. So many questions on this case. EMS sources raised those questions to Local 4 about a police decision to bring the child to the hospital without waiting for an ambulance to arrive on Saturday. It was then when officers responded to a report that the little girl wasn't breathing and say they got the baby to the hospital within four minutes. Today, police released body cam showing an officer giving the baby compressions every step of the way. Police Commissioner Bill Dwyer defended his officers and addressed any friction with the fire department. It's really a partnership with police and fire, and uh, we're going to mend any problems we have currently uh, with the fire department. The officers did nothing wrong and utilized their training, their experience, and common sense to get the child to the hospital as quickly as possible. Dwyer said there's no internal investigation facing the officers, but there is a death investigation looking into how the baby died. A Detroit man is arrested after posting video on social media of himself beating his puppy until it loses consciousness. This is video of the man losing it when his puppy chews up what his friend is calling $50 replica Cartier sunglasses. Uproar from animal advocates on social media led to Detroit police and the Michigan Humane Society working together to locate him. And tonight, he is in custody. Crime Stoppers offering a $10,000 reward to find the driver that sent a road sign flying, killing a man in Orion Township. It happened February 21st on Lapeer Road near Walden. Investigators say the driver going north went into the median and then hit that road sign. That sign went airborne, going through the windshield and hitting a driver going in the opposite direction. 31-year-old Thomas Schleichler from Lake Orion was hospitalized after the crash. He died from his injuries on March 1st. Deputies are looking for a silver or gray 2013 to 2015 Kia Optima with damage to its front end and hood. So if you have any information, please call Crime Stoppers at 1-800-SPEAK-UP. Security preparations underway for a possible arrest of former President Donald Trump. All NYPD officers ordered to be in uniform and prepared for deployment in case of protests. The former president was not arrested today as he claimed he expected on social media over the weekend. A possible indictment could come in connection to the hush money case involving adult film star Stormy Daniels. There are at least four other investigations ongoing into allegations against the former president. A judge gives the final sign off on a historic settlement for people impacted by the Flint water crisis. A Genesee County judge granted the formal approval. The state will pay $600 million and Flint will pay $20 million. It's the largest civil settlement in state history. 80% will go to children, 18% will go to adults and property damage. The rest will be spent on special education services in Flint. The repeal of the state's right to work law is headed to Governor Whitmer's desk. Right to work bans a requirement that workers pay union dues to be employed. A repeal previously passed the House and Senate, but revisions made by the Senate sent the bill back to the House for a second round of approval. The governor is expected to sign it by the end of the month.